would you ever consider a zempit? I'd be a spatula sweetheart. It's the question that's going to divide the nation. Mmm, this is a juicy question. But I was compromised by someone that I trusted. We're back with one of our favourite videos ever. Today, we're going to be doing a Popeye's mukbang Q&A. Now, what I will say is last time I filmed this sort of video, I was so stressed because I was moving house and it was just horrendous. And I panicked about a video. So I filmed a mukbang Q&A and you guys absolutely loved it. I have some delicious questions. I also have, if you're not a member already, we have a big beefy chat broadcast channel it's taking me a while to bend the knee to it but to be quite honest we've had such a ball over there i really love it and i kind of i treat my big beefies with a little bit more like i'll give them it first okay we'll talk about stuff together first um, and we're having a jolly lovely time over there there's some juicy ones first things first we need to talk about what i've ordered now my most exciting discovery is on the soda stream machines that you can get they have one in toby carvery which is where i discovered it side note also one of my favorite restaurants um it's not favorite as in like gourmet but it's like a guilty pleasure i love the fact that you can get lime flavored coke stream so nice it's a uh, lime flavored coke zero we have the main the main event so if you saw my slim chickens one you'll know that i slagged off ranch but i needed something creamy to go with my order so i did go for a ranch i went for a combo box wouldn't consider myself a combo box kind of girl if i'm being honest but i saw that it was a spicy box and i was like that sounds like a bit of me so we have a spicy chicken burger which actually looks ginormous we have two spicy chicken tenders smell spicy and some cajun fries no i got regular fries and then i got a cajun gravy a bold barbecue and a ranch i feel like i need some breathing room here and the jumper's getting in the way so it's coming off let's just initially try a bit of the cajun gravy oh that smells it smells delicious Mmm, that is spicy and the gravy is delicious. Let's get into this. <laughs> this one absolutely kills me. Are you enjoying not having to watch football? I remember you always looking bored during the Man United games. Yeah, I am enjoying that. I love not having a sport house. I just, I don't know, maybe it's to do with my upbringing and just having it rammed down my throat, but I, I just can't bear the background noise of sport. It drives me to distraction. Arguably not sure what's worse, that or a Spider-Man PS5 game, but... God, this is so lovely. How have you learned to be so eloquent when discussing your emotions slash mental health? I struggle understanding myself, let alone able to express it to someone else. That is the loveliest thing ever. Do you know, I think one of the biggest reasons for that is because I'm surrounded by such eloquent and self-aware people. So you've just, I don't know, I feel like I've, I, I feel like I've learned so much from the people that I've grown up with and been surrounded by. Let's try this barbecue sauce. Oh, fuck me. That's delicious. There's not much sauce in there. Can you see that? What's coming up next for you career-wise? What are your aspirations? What's next on the house to-do list? Oh, God. Listen. Everything is left to do. I still have the decorator to come in and finish off that. And I have the electricians to come in and finish off some other bits. And then I have... What I guess what you'd call like snagging that needs to be done. I'm distracted by the ranch because this one actually looks quite nice. Let's try the tender in here. See, that's a good ranch. Mm hmm Excellent ranch, Popeyes. Well done, you. But to be honest, I feel like the house is, at the moment, the headspace is that is always going to be stuff to, to do. There's so much that I want done, rectified, improved on, redone. All right, I don't know. The list feels pretty endless, to be quite honest. Let's have a look at this burger. That is just like, that's thick. Oh, wow. We've got, we've got some beautiful sauce in there. We've got a gherkin. Bloody hell. Get my chops around that. I'm very delicious. So for those of you that don't know, we do have season two of Spill coming, which is a podcast I 
host co-host with my best friend Billy, Billy Bartier. If you don't follow her, why not? We released season one this year and we have a second season coming with the most iconic sponsor. We're so proud of it. Um, and all will be able to be shared really soon once all the details are confirmed and locked in. So there's loads coming with Spill. Loads of opportunities that Bills and I are doing together, which I'm really, really proud of. In terms of personally, I'm actually just trying to carry on producing, showing up as I am, and trying to put myself in the places to elevate my career. Like, ultimately... Ultimately, I love what I do, but I want to do it bigger and to more people. Um, so my focus really is to grow and not necessarily in the sense of grow by numbers, but grow by the amount of people that I have in my like space. Really chuffed this is a great ranch. We've been needing a good ranch, haven't we? I want to launch a solo podcast series on here. I want to relaunch Filter Drop Season 2. I want to work with brands in a bigger in a bigger capacity. So do like really I, I guess big is the is the word that I'm like keep gravitating back towards when I'm trying to describe what I want to do with my career. And it's just like big. A big beefy career, you know. I'd say the chips are like a little bit bang averagey, you know. That barbecue sauce is sensational. This is arguably the best question I've ever been asked in my life. If you were a kitchen utensil, what would you be? I'd be a spatula, sweetheart. I'd be a plastic-ended spatula. And to be specific, I've recently treated myself to a cobalt blue Le Creuset spatula with a wooden handle. And do you know why it's even better than a standard plastic spatula? Because you can't put it in the dishwasher because it's wooden, so you don't want to melt the glue. So you always have to hand wash it, so it's always there, ready and waiting for you on the side. It gets every little last bit. You can stir, you can fold, you can sweep round the edge of the pan, get every little last bit of sauce out. No waste. It's absolutely outrageous. Someone said M&S or Waitrose. Now, it's the question that's going to divide the nation. This is really sensational. It's a great burger. Listen, for me, in my opinion, to put it simply, M&S is where you go if you can't cook. Waitress is where you go if you can cook. Which I know is savage as fuck. But what I mean by that is Waitrose have a range called Waitrose Cooks Ingredients. And I'm like, that's what I mean when I say I love Waitrose. Waitrose is where you go if you, if you love cooking ingredients, cuisines, different cultures, you want to cook things from scratch. M&S is where you go, where you want delicious, incredible quality food, but you're being a bit lazy. You're being a lazy girl. So I love them both equally, but for very different things. If I could only choose one though, I would choose Waitrose. For funsies, what's your favourite hob ring on your cooker? Bottom right, babes. Staring at it, there's four my extract fans in the centre. Bottom right, me the hob. Unreal, unmatched appliances. So grateful love them. Mmm, this is a juicy question. How did you tell your ex-husband about your boyfriend when the time came? I told him way earlier than I would have wanted to tell him and way earlier than I felt necessary to tell him. I felt at the time, I'm not going to go into details because I'm definitely not giving the situation any energy, but I was compromised by someone that I trusted and although I didn't do anything wrong I had a level of respect that I wanted to maintain because of how close things were that was um disrupted and I built myself up this big situation to tell him went to meet him face to face and he just he'd just been on a date and he was like don't worry about it thank you for being honest with me like yeah that was it so Although it was fine when I told him, I had to tell him way earlier than I like ever would have wanted to. Just because I think, like personally, I did believe that it needed a bit more time. And also, we weren't even together. We were just seeing each other. So it was such early days that there almost wasn't anything to tell in terms of... Do you know what I mean? Favourite shaped pasta. I have answered this on... I have answered this on a podcast episode it's penne or spaghetti call me basic it's classic it's not trying to be something fancy or obscure it's just a classic it's a cult favorite what's better than spaghetti bolognese absolutely nothing i tell you someone's asked if i'll be doing vlogmas 
yeah, I think I do every other day is what I've done in previous years. But I'll be doing every other day <clears throat> throughout the month of December. Someone said, I had slim chickens for lunch today after your mukbang. Girl, the slim sauce. Yes, yes, yes. Tell us where are the must-see places in Sicily. We're actually going there next week because my dad's getting married there. My favourite place in Sicily is all Tija. I also love the other side of the island. We did Tornara di Scorpello or something like that. Up in the mountains, there's a gorgeous hotel called... Masseria Susafa, unreal. I'll link all of these places down below. I haven't done, actually haven't done the center of Catania yet, but we are doing that for my dad's wedding, so we'll get to see that. Notto, it's just my favorite country and I really don't think you can go wrong. It's unbelievable. The only thing I wish is that it's, it's just becoming so touristy now and popular that I'm really grateful we discovered it when everyone was still like, where's Sicily? Whereas now everyone's number one destination choice is Sicily. So I feel really, we got to really enjoy a part of Sicily that wasn't like over, over tourist, overly touristy. And almost the reason why I loved it so much was because it was so authentic. Okay, this is a big question and it's going to be a really contradicting question for me to answer whilst I'm ramming a burger down my neck. But somebody has asked, would you ever consider a Zempit? Weirdly enough, and the timing wasn't planned, I've just done a post on this. Honestly, I feel like I shouldn't be eating and talking about this, but I'm just going to put this out there. A chicken select is better than this. I said what I said. Some of you will know and have picked up on how bad my relationship with food and my body image has been over the last six months in particular. Two years on a lesser scale than that my whole life if you've had the pleasure to know me for that long the work i have done internally with body image with acceptance with nutrition with my relationship with food and with my relationship with exercise over the last five to seven years has been life-changing and i have to a certain extent changed my life because of the habits that I've unlearned, the new habits that I've brought into my life, etc, etc. However, the one thing that I've never been able to fully get a grasp on is the bad side of the relationship with food I have. I punish myself with food on occasion, I binge on occasion, and I have never been able to get a hold of it. Obviously, I'm so committed to doing the work and putting in the hard work, and I really do feel like I've done that to a, a certain extent and I've done a lot of research and I have decided that I am going to try um, one of the weight loss injections called Manjaro. In no way is this me justifying to you why I'm making that choice. However, I have literally built my career off being completely honest upfront. What you see is what you get and that's not about to change anytime soon. When I first started hearing about all of these weight loss injections, all I was hearing was the direct correlation to people becoming skinny and slim. I've always been an advocate, you do what you want with your body. For me personally, that's not what I want for my body. I, I don't follow trends in any form, let alone a trend that means I'm going to be conforming my body to that trend. Does that sentence make sense? I don't know if it does. My reasons for wanting to do this is because I want help in this area of my life. The noise that is in my head constantly that I can't seem to curb with therapy and positive quotes and following plus size women and following body, advo body positivity advocates, like the noise isn't going away. It hasn't gone away. And I do feel like I just want help with that. I'm going to try it. I won't be weighing myself. That's just my personal preference and choice. But I also, I want to make sure that I hold space for people to not feel shame. When I launched Filter Drop, which changed my life and changed the way that I truly saw a beauty standard and a version of beautiful, I never wanted to shame people for using filters. I understand why we use filters. I understand why the trend to be skinny is taking over. I understand why all of these things are the way they are because we live in such a fucked up society where women in particular are held to such a high standard of beauty, it, it, of course, that that pressure is going to get to you. Like, of course, it is going to impact how you view and see the world. If you're constantly being confronted by this is great and this isn't, I do personally believe that I am doing this for myself in a mentally strong way with my mental health as my priority. And what I mean by that is, again, for me personally, if the food noise could be quietened, but my body stayed the same, 
I'd accept it and I would just have to work harder to accept my body the way that it is currently. But the food noise is what I'm focused on. Yes, I do want to lose some weight. I still love my curves. I, I don't want, I don't personally want to be skinny or want to conform to that trend. I just want help with the constant volume that I have over food. It consumes me. I'll leave the Instagram post below so you can read it because I feel like that explains it better. But yeah, I'm going to be honest with you about it. I don't know what mukbang will be doing when I'm on it. Can't imagine I'll be eating this much. If your doggy, if your gorgeous doggies could talk, what accent would they have? Please do an impression for us. Much love. Vinny is from Liverpool. Through my fucking ball. I'm going to take that fucking tree down. It's hard to do a male scout accent. Me, so I'm going to go and get that fucking tree. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to get the ball. I'm going to keep going. Mum, mum. What's she doing? Mum, my name's Vinny. I'm fucking crazy. Franco's would be... I'm I'm torn because Franco's actually from Newport, but he doesn't strike me as Welsh. Hello, Mum. My name is Franco. I'm a perfect monster. And actually, I just do love you so much. <laughs> what the actual fuck am I doing? Oh, God. <laughs> I need to get out more. If you could live anywhere, where would you live? Um, Good question, this. Very much think when it comes to living abroad, it's grass is greener but if i had to put a pin in the map right now i'd probably say canada canada is one of those places that when i went specifically to vancouver i said that i would love 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 to live in canada however i see a lot of videos about living in switzerland <clears throat> looks peng in an ideal world i'd love to have my house an apartment in like vancouver or la or a, like a vibey city in America or Canada and then I would like to have like a gorgeous villa or poolside apartment in Italy, Sicily specifically. Okay all of a sudden we've lost a lot of light so I'm going to make this one the last question. How to keep a relationship spicy? Oh my god I don't know because I think it's different for everybody but I think the one thing I would say oh let me move this back a bit the one thing I would say is communicate like you need to be able to talk about sex with your partner and affection with your partner and talk about what it is that you both need from i know for me and my boyfriend we have such great communication that always needs working on it always needs to be improved we always learn something from any breakdown in communication that we do have but yeah communicate don't be afraid to talk to like a professional like a therapist or even a sex therapist sex is so underspoken about Intimacy is so undertaught. We're undereducated in that. It's just so taboo. That is probably what I would say. Don't be afraid to like talk about it. I think so much power can be held in in finding a combined ability to be able to talk. Anyway, I am going to call that a day. Love you and leave you. If you're not subscribed, please make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. If you loved it and enjoyed it, let me know if you want to see more of these. If you have any questions, let me know if maybe you want me to talk about any of these topics in more detail and we can do something like that in the future. But as always, I love you so much. I am so grateful for your love and support as always, and I will see you next time.